add GitHub Copilot chat capabilities to your VS Code extensions. There are some great new projects out there, an astounding free Wi-Fi hack, and a pick of the week for people that remember CDs. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And this is the show where we bring you the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. So we've been off a bit because of summer vacation here in the US. I've spent some time at some conferences, some time fighting the heat, having my identity stolen by AI. That last one, that is real, by the way. Uh, earlier this week, a long defunct website that I worked at in college was revived and it started publishing AI-generated articles under my name. Yeah, yeah. My name has now been removed. It's mostly good now, I guess, but if you call me Mary Brown in public, we, we can share a laugh about it. Anyway, we are back. We have lots of news to cover, but first, uh, things tend to slow down a little bit in the summer, you know, what with the vacations and the AI identity theft and all that. And that means that it can be a really great time to learn a new skill or try out new projects. And that is my awkward segue into telling you about a few new updates to our GitHub for Beginners series on this very YouTube channel, as well as the GitHub blog. And we've um, published a couple of new episodes in this series, including one on creating your first repo, guest starring yours truly. And my colleague and friend Kadesha Kerr is leading these videos and blogs. So if you're new to Git or GitHub and, you know, or if you want to pass off some resources to someone you know who is new to these things, please check them out. We've got links uh, in the show notes and the description to all these resources, but this is a really great series. Next up, let's talk about some updates to Visual Studio Code. So the latest update, which came out a couple weeks ago, maybe a week ago, um, added some new features like better Python environment discovery, custom tab labels, and TypeScript 5.5. But the big news is that the latest update adds support for GitHub Copilot chat extensions. Now, we announced GitHub Copilot extensions at Microsoft Build back in May, and you can extend GitHub Copilot either via a GitHub app in the GitHub Marketplace, or you can add support for GitHub Copilot chat directly into your VS Code extension. And the VS Code stuff was uh, actually in the Insiders build last month, but it has now made its way into the stable release, which is great. And so I've got some resources linked in the show notes and the description um, down below to documentation, sample code, and a few sessions from Microsoft Build. But the basic idea is that you can add and create your own agents that work inside GitHub Copilot as part of your new or existing VS Code extension. And then you can tie that into uh, the new language model APIs, but you can also have it connected to another backend or service. And so more and more of these um, extensions are gonna be developed, but folks like MongoDB, Stripe, and Parallels, and Postgres have already shipped extensions that have Copilot chat support, and we'll be highlighting more as they come. But this is a really great way of adding, you know, Copilot support to your stuff, which is great. And again, I've got all those resources linked down below. Okay, so since it is summer, I thought that it would be fun, maybe a good time to highlight some of my favorite new projects that I've seen over the last couple of months. And I actually asked some of my colleagues, shout out to the Danger Thread for their suggestions too. And I'm going to actually first give a shout out to my pal Ray, who gave me two suggestions that I want to talk about, and both have to do with sustainability. Software is amazing, but you know, computing, especially in the era of generative AI, one of the uncomfortable conversations that we have to have when it comes to this stuff is the cost. And I don't mean the dollar and cent cost, I mean the environmental cost. These tools are incredibly powerful and are getting more and more energy efficient all the time, but right now they can also consume a lot of energy and that's something that we should all be mindful of. Now, there are a few projects that can help you assess and track the carbon emissions of your software. And it doesn't just have to be generative AI, it can be any software uh, at all. And, and the first is actually called Green Metrics Tool and it can plug into your infrastructure to measure the carbon emissions of kind of your entire end-to-end -end ecosystem. It's a great way to get a sense of how much energy your software is using and how you can make it more efficient. The other is called Code Carbon, and it has a similar aim, but it takes a slightly different approach. Uh, it started by trying to answer the question, what is the carbon emission impact of my computer program? You can monitor your own code, um, but you can also use it to monitor the emissions independently of your code, so based on other code you're running on your machine. And I've got links to both of these projects and their GitHub pages down below, but this is something that we should all be thinking about because you know what, sustainability is really, really important and it affects all of us. The next thing that I wanna share is an amazing blog post from Robert Keaton that is called Pi Sky Wi-Fi, completely free, unbelievably stupid Wi-Fi on long haul flights. 
This is a great blog post. In this in this post, uh, which I did link down below, and that, again, you've got to read, Robert details how he was able to get free Wi-Fi on a long haul flight by basically exploiting like a name field on an airline's website. Um, so basically, he was able to figure out that although most Wi-Fi costs money on flights, airlines will allow you to log in to your own account for free to make you know changes uh, to that account. But if you continue to try to change um, the, the name field, it's going to pull that field for changes and it'll keep you online. So he developed a Python script that'll essentially let you tunnel through that field provided you're trying to change your name um, on the site. Um, and, and by tunneling through, that means you can run other operations too and load other web pages. It is horrendously inefficient. Uh, it is a terrible way to get Wi-Fi. That is not the point. The point is that it works. And even better, Robert put the code on GitHub as PySky Wi-Fi. I've got all this linked down below, but Robert, I salute your ingenuity and your commitment to the bit. This is excellent work. The next thing I want to talk about is from Matt Evans, and it is called Micro Mac, which is how he was able to recreate a 128K Mac, AKA the very first Macintosh, and, and the worst one, if we're honest, because 128K was definitely not enough for everybody. And yeah, I'm mixing my Bill Gates and Steve Jobs metaphors here, but let me live. Uh, but anyway, Matt was able to get 128K uh, Mac emulated on a Raspberry Pi Pico, and he details how he did this on his blog, and he's got a number of different GitHub projects associated with this too, and I've got all of it linked down below, but I really, really love this, and this is a, a great way to build the mini Mac of your dreams 40 years later. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So if you're of a certain age, so like my age, uh, you might remember that we used to have this thing called audio CDs. And yes, I guess we technically still do, but honestly, I haven't even listened to music off of a CD in years, even though I give Taylor Swift hundreds of dollars buying her collectible variants. But one of the cooler things in the 90s was that bands would add hidden tracks on CDs, taking advantage of um, something in the CD spec uh, that was known as a pre-gap, which is space hidden just before the first track. And my friend Ernie Smith on his blog, Tedium, dives into how this process worked and the compatibility problems that it could cause when trying to rip CDs uh, later on. This is a really, really delightful post. It made me remember finding hidden tracks on CDs as a kid, as well as the whole lore of enhanced CDs, which were kind of problematic for various reasons, but I loved them anyway. My favorite enhanced CD was Boz Lerman's Romeo and Juliet soundtrack, for what it's worth. Anyway, this is a great blog. Definitely read it. Let me know your favorite hidden CD track or weird CD variation in the comments or your thoughts on any of our other stories. Like, have you been impersonated by AI? Have you been able to get free Wi-Fi on a plane? Let me know. That's gonna do it for me. If you liked this episode, give us a like because it's gonna help the algorithm and subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all your nerd needs. See you next time. Thank you.